So we have our p-value of 0 0.0324. That's less than 0 0.05. So, we're going to, so we will reject HO, conclude that the population mean is greater than 16.2, and that some adjustment or experimentation or repair is needed for this soda machine. Picture of the sampling distribution. Now we're going to give our full-blown interpretation of the p-value. If the population mean is 16.2, if the null hypothesis is true, remember HO was that mu equal to 16.2, if that's true, then there is a p-value chance, that's the 0 0.0324, that we would get either a sample mean greater than or equal to 17, or a sample mean less than or equal to 15.4. In other words, we're just writing down in this statement what we already have drawn on this graph. That's a pattern that will continue as we move forward and look at the p-value in a variety of contexts. Again, the effect size. We talked about this in problem one. We'll still have these same definitions of when we get an effect size, defining it as trivial, small, medium, or large. You can reread those and pause here if you'd like. So effect size, it's just like we had before, except you can see that instead of sigma here, I've replaced that with an with a s because that's what we have sample standard deviation. Numerically, of course, that's still going to be 0.45, which is small, but it's because it's between 0.2 and up to less than or equal to 0.5. Again, the difference between this and our test statistic is that in the denominator, instead of having sx bar or s divided by the square root of n, we just have s. Okay, so for our confidence interval, we want a 95% confidence interval. Our general formula is always going to be statistic plus or minus margin of error, where margin of error is some confidence coefficient which will now be t because we have a sample standard deviation. Of course, the standard error will be sx bar, which is s divided by the square root of n. So there's our calculations for the confidence interval. Just plug in the x bar, plug in s, and the square root of n. This 2.064 might need a little bit more explanation for you. So you need to look at your t table. If you don't have that, or haven't printed it anyway, print it or go get it or whatever. If you look on the front side of it, at the top, you're going to see some things about one tail and two tail, but you also have a confidence level, and we're looking at 90 5%. So go to the column that has 95%, and along the left-hand side, they'll have numbers starting at 1, 2, so on. These are the degrees of freedom, and you'll just go down till it says 24, and at the intersection there, you'll see 2.064, which you'll note is a little bit higher than we had with the z-distribution, where we had 1.96, about, remember, of the 95% all the way back to confidence interval about plus or minus two standard deviations will be associated with 95%. So we have this interval here, 16.27 to 17.73. The entire interval is greater than 16.2. Therefore, we will conclude that we are out of control, that we're going to either adjust or repair the machine or do some experimentation to see if we can do some improvements to the uh, machine. The other thing, and I, this again, I said this in the uh, uh, problem one. Again, this is all kind of the same. The only thing we changed is when we went from having a population standard deviation sigma, that was a Z problem. Now we have sample standard deviation. So we replace the Zs with Ts and then correct for degrees of freedom. 
But anyway, this really is a wide interval. Wide enough that I'm a little concerned about that, and you should be. And let's see what that is. Something you'll see in other classes called statistical process control. It will look at differences related to the mean as do as we are in here. But in addition, it's going to look at issues regarding variability, which may be the biggest problem that we have in this problem with standard deviation of 1.76. That's pretty, that's a lot of difference in a Coke machine. If you went plus or minus two of that just on an individual value, that's about seven ounces from the top to the bottom of that. That seems like an awful lot of variation or error in that. Again, this is the same thing that we've I've been saying on several slides now. Is Now our focus moves from adjusting the machine to experimentation and improvement of that machine.